it's, it's a reckless plan, which makes you think, what else are these people prepared to do? Police say cases of what's being called bank jugging are on the rise during the holidays. It involves thieves who stake out potential victims in bank parking lots, follow them to their next destination, and rob them. Referring to a spate of robberies that have plagued Southern California and most other major metropolitan areas in recent months called bank jugging. This crime is when a usually a group of people follow unsuspecting victims to a bank and wait for them to withdraw a large amount of cash. And then what they do is once that victim leaves the bank, they follow them to their intended destination. The name may sound new, but this type of organized robbery is not. You usually have somebody driving a vehicle. Oftentimes you have somebody that's actually inside the bank posing as a customer themselves, and they're in communication with each other. So they're keeping close eyes on their victims. This surveillance video from July captured a bank jugging incident in Sherman Oaks. A customer walks out of a Wells Fargo on Ventura Boulevard with a bag containing $10,000 cash. He didn't know that 20 minutes after entering the bank, a gunman and a getaway driver had pulled into the parking lot and waited. Once outside with the bag in hand, one of the suspects confronts the victim at gunpoint. The victim throws the bag of money before the gunman scoops it up and takes off. Police say they're seeing an increase in these types of incidents, as well as follow home robberies in general this holiday season. Which makes you think, what else are these people prepared to do? I don't know him at all. He's just trying to break into my house. So I just did my best intentions to try to protect my family. Well, I was just sitting on the couch playing a game and I had got, uh, I heard someone knocking on the door and I had to check the peephole and I saw it was someone I didn't know. <laughs> So I just left it alone, went back to go play the game, and then he rang the doorbell, my ring doorbell. So I just got up, went to the restroom, not restroom, went to my closet, and I answered and I just told him, hey, what's up? Basically, how can I help you? Can I help you? Oh, yes, uh, they came to check your air filters. Um, I'm not sure this is three eighty two seventy seven. Telling me that he was maintenance, and then he needed to come check my air filter, air filter but... I knew it was a lie because last time we had tried to get our maintenance to get our air filter changed, they told me they couldn't do anything about it. So I guess you could say he tried to play the part, but he lied twice whenever he talked to me. He told me someone came to check the air filter earlier and then he had said, oh no, I'm here to check, I'm here to check your air filter. So I just, I felt suspicious about it anyways. Plus he had on, a, I guess you, it looked like a track suit. He had on blue set, sweatpants with the black shoes and a I think it was a blue sweatshirt and then he had the bandana on but he was playing the part he had the whole notepad and everything he was trying to even went to the back door or the per people in front of us to see act like he's gonna check their air filter too but basically told him no one's home he got to come another day 
he just told me, all right, I closed my phone, came back to play the game, and so then... At, point, at this point, what are you thinking is going on? I wasn't thinking anything. I was just like, oh, well, I guess someone just wanted to get something or just, I don't know, just maintenance, I guess. No, 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 no. Yeah, we're checking the air filters. Oh, nobody's home right now. We'll have to wait until another day. Oh, uh, much appreciated. Uh, and then three minutes later, while I'm playing the game, I hear a loud ass bang at the door. And then I'm thinking someone's trying to knock, but no, I hear another bang and then another bang. And then I, I, I just fast. I couldn't, couldn't think properly. I was like, well, he's trying to get into my house. My brother was in the restroom. So I had to hurry up and get up, go run to him and quietly and try to hurry up and tell him, Hey, someone's in the house. We need to do something. So in that moment, I tried to hurry up and I guess you could say find my firearm and it was far away. So I had to like hurry up, scurry and go grab my gun, come back. And I positioned myself by my couch and my hallway facing directly at the door. And I was going to wait till he came in. But whenever I checked my ring camera, I saw he was kicking the door and he had a firearm in his hand. So I wasn't going to let nothing happen to either me or my brother. So what I, I guess you could say, I did what my best intentions thought. And I fired at the door and hoping I hit him. And when I, I guess you say, sure enough, he left downstairs and that's basically everything. Had to call the cops and wait for them to show up. Looking at the video, they fired back, but I'm not, I'm not too sure. I, I, I know he fired back, but I don't know when. I just know. Breaking into their vehicles and grabbing your hard-earned money. West 2's Dave McDaniel explains what bank jugging is and how to best protect yourself. The ring car camera started sending me notifications like, okay, no, this is fine. And then after the second or third one, I look down and I see somebody, a black hooded figure in my front seat. Not wanting to put his identity out there, but happy to share his story to help prevent other break-ins. I see them, I don't know, about 100 feet away, you know, in the parking lot. I start yelling and they jump into the car and then they drove off. Orlando police have already arrested 42-year-old Sean Glenn Sr. And they're looking for Broderick Graves and Michael Fisher, both 24. Police say they're working more than a dozen bank jugging cases where this organized group watches people from rented cars with tinted windows leave banks with envelopes of cash, then move their car as close to the victim's car as they could and watch where exactly the victim would put the envelope in the car. With that information in most cases, they then follow their targeted victim to the next errand. Then they move in. As the victim walks away and enters their next stop, the suspects start smashing the window, removing it, then going directly to the location of the envelope. Targeting people that literally are just going about their day, people that are elderly, 90 years old, just trying to get some cash to take care of some bills and stuff. And arrest paperwork indicates a good number of victims are of an age where paying with cash is still part of their routine. Police say the crew was behind multiple smash and grab robberies across the Bay Area, including one at the Jay and Huss Custom Jewelry Store at the East Ridge Mall and similar robberies at the Valley Fair Mall and La Placita Shopping Center. Police also recovered multiple guns believed to have been used by the suspects as well as some of the jewelry that was stolen. Mash and grab robbery leads to hours of drama in Yonkers as police went after the four suspects who went into a quiet neighborhood. Now, take a look here, this surveillance video. Tonight, three of the four of these suspects are in custody. Police say they're from the Bronx and they have criminal records. This store owner tells CBS 2's Tony Aiello what happened. He came and he was fighting with them, grabbing the jewelry inside and pushing them outside. Jewelry store owner Tony Montana is cleaning up and adding up the value of what was stolen. 5.30 Thursday afternoon, brazen robbers used a crowbar and a sledgehammer to smash his display window and grab $100,000 worth of gold chains and diamond rings. Yonkers police say the suspect in the light-colored hoodie cut himself while grabbing for loot. Inside the store, this employee, who wants to remain anonymous, decided to fight back. First, swatting at the robbers from the other side of the glass. Then, running outside, grabbing a sledgehammer and pounding on their getaway vehicle, damaging it as they drove away. 
It's, it's a reckless plan, which makes you think, what else are these people prepared to do? people it's Rob Lee. Do you know the truth about slavery? In the past 10 years there has been an onslaught of talk about slavery and I'm talking about black slavery, African slavery, transatlantic slavery. And I just wonder how many of you really know the truth about slavery. And what I would like to do today is punch some holes in the lies about slavery. At no other time in your life and in history has information and historical facts been suppressed and outright lied about than right now. And this is no more evident than when it comes to white history and Bible facts and history. So when we talk about slavery, just the word sparks emotions from the, the masses. It caused nothing for me personally. It caused nothing but yawns and boredom. It bores me and it makes me yawn because nobody knows what they're talking about. People have knee-jerk reactions to words without ever thinking critically and using common sense and discernment and or wishing to examine the facts. The facts. They would rather put their sweaty palms across their mouths and behave like good little slaves. Yes, slaves. Isn't it amazing that you have people talking about slavery and the people that talk about slavery and hide it and lie about it are the actual slaves? Ignorant people all over this nation speak of black slavery, reparations, and guilt when they themselves are the real slaves. They're simply too dumb, too weak, and naive to understand it. Therefore, allow me today humbly with the blessing of my Father and Jesus Christ to clarify something to you about slavery that you will not hear in schools, churches, movies, or even your favorite video makers will not touch this because they are not called to. Now, when the so-called Native Americans, who I call Indians, because I'm not sure, first of all, let's be honest, they were never Native to this continent, okay? The people that we call Indians, whether it be the Cherokee, the Arapaho, the Aztec, they were not Native to this continent. They were Native to, they, were, they come from the Asiatics, all right? Now, when these people called Indians were being conquered and... In this nation, do you know who was the biggest enemy to the Indian nations? Other Indians. And let me tell you before we go further, as a young man and even now, I've always had kind of a soft spot in my heart for Indians. No, they're not my people. No, they do not share my beliefs. But I've always kind of had a little bit of a soft spot for them. I'm allowed this. And I will feel it. No, I don't want to be like them. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to do what they do. But I've always kind of had, kind of feel for what happened to you, because my people, white people, went through the same thing. But nobody talks about that, right? Nobody talks about white slavery. In the Bible, the Israelites, not Jews, because Jews are not Israelites, and the Israelites are not Jews. We went into slavery three times. Now. Let's get back to the Indians before we talk about African slavery and we go deep and understand some truth. Now, the Northern Bluecoats, the Union Army, okay, the United States Army, okay, were the enemy, but it was other Indians that would actually lead the Bluecoats to the Indians who had escaped into secret hiding places in this vast nation. You see, many Indians had gotten away. They knew their land was being overrun, all right? It was ordained by God. White people were going to conquer this nation. It was so big, 
that many Indians could get away. Who led them to the other Indians? Other Indians did. Now this was long before technology and the automobile. Okay? This was done on horseback. If the masses are naive and blind enough to see the spawn of the devil as God's chosen, then surely they'll believe the lies about slavery. But we don't have to. The, the key questions that we need to ask ourselves is this. How, how, Reverend, were the African slaves captured? How did they get on those ships and end up in the Americas, whether it be North America or South America or in the Caribbean? How did they end up there? How were they captured? How did they get on those ships? And what did the Africans see when they were on those ships? What flag flew on those ships? Who sold them? Who bought them? Who did they really work for when they arrived in the Americas? It doesn't matter if it's Rhode Island, South Carolina, or Rio. Whom did they work for? Easy answers that reveal much about our world today and the nonstop lies that we endure. Now, there is no need to go down rabbit holes chasing lies and fables. We can stay on top and bring the rabbit to the top. We will not chase fables, speculation, and rumor from the people that God condemned because that is what they want us to do. They want us to do that, you see. In fact, we will use the spirit, wisdom, and faith that we have from our Father through Jesus to show us the truth. So we will not try to open thousands of doors for non-existent answers because the truth is there are some things we simply don't know now and that we will not know until the appointed time in the next life. There are things that we just don't know, which is most things that we don't know. But we can open some doors and we can punch some holes in the lies and we can garner some knowledge. Now, we will open one door and it will give you all you need to know and the mystery will be solved. It will not take volumes of books or weeks of debate and hours upon hours of documentaries that spew lie after lie. The transatlantic and Med Mediterranean slave trade was founded and funded by the synagogue of Satan and Muslims. In addition, to be fair, the Asiatics and the Persians enslaved more than their share of black slaves. As I said earlier, white slavery has been as prominent as black slavery, but no one says anything. I wonder why. Because who is the monster that is driving the ship, and who do they hate more than anybody? You have God's real children that are hated by the imposters. Now, a question to you. Do you believe the narrative that has been cleverly crafted and repeated nonstop by the media, internet, and academia that boats ships full of white men pulled up to the huge continent of Africa and said, hey, black man, get on. Did the black men not have a choice? Young black men who were healthy, strong, and athletic. How do you think they caught them? On the other hand, maybe you believe the lies that white men went out in the bush and captured them, put them in shackles, and then sailed them 5,000 miles to the Americas to be slaves on farms and plantations. Now, let me say it again before we get into the plantations. We have been taught, the fools have been taught, white men in boats pulled up and were able to get hundreds, thousands of black people on a ship with no problem and take them back to the Americas to be slaves. Young, healthy, athletic men that could run like the wind. They were, that was their country. They knew where to hide, how to hide. They could run for days. This is not talking bad about them. It's a compliment. These were young, strong people, man. And we're to believe that white men pulled up and ran them down. No, man. This is one of the... You know, what's so bizarre about it is that people don't even try to think deeper to picture it in their mind. How did it actually happen? So, we're told that these... White men, these devils, white devils is what we've been taught. 
We kidnapped these black people and we brought them back to farms and plantations. Speaking of plantations, plantations were huge and owned by the incredibly wealthy. Even in my state today in Virginia, there are plantations and old plantations and they were owned by the incredibly wealthy. The overwhelming majority of white people in this nation were hardly wealthy, man. They were trying to make ends meet and they had to work for every bit of it. The synagogue of Satan has conned the gullible sheep into believing that white people are responsible for slavery when it is in fact the synagogue of Satan who is responsible for the slave trade and the lies and deceit that surrounds slavery. However, we still need to answer the questions. How were the Africans captured and put on ships? How? How did that happen? Because we know we've just put it in, its, in a rational context that white men didn't pull up to these young athletic men and say, get on. Didn't, surely, that's just nonsense. That is stupidity. However, we have to find out how did it happen? Merchants. Now, if you take the word merchant and the word mercenary, you will see they sound very similar. Why? I'll show you in just a minute. Merchants and high-ranking officials of the Catholic Church and Jewish merchants using mercenaries would sail to the African continent and they would buy black slaves from black tribal leaders. Now, why would these black tribal leaders sell their own people? There's lots of reasons. One of the reasons is they would receive goods. The second reason is they would get rid of the people that, one, they deemed a threat to them and their people, that they deemed a threat to them and their priesthood or their leadership role, so they would want to get rid of them. All right? That's how it really happened. You had black people selling black people to merchants using mercenaries. No warfare was needed in these deals. Now, there are different types of slavery throughout history. For example, the Muslim Mediterranean slave trade. The Asians and Persians used war and forced kidnapping of black African slaves, and even with one another. The Muslims would even castrate the black male slaves. Nobody talks about it, and yet how bizarre to see black people becoming Muslim. The people that have enslaved you more than anybody, you gravitate to. This subject is full of so many lies that very few ever have the spirit or common sense from our Father to think critically. There was a group of diabol diabolical leaders and merchants, and the word diabolical means devilishly cruel, and that's what they were. These diabolical leaders and merchants in the Catholic Church were called Jesuits. Now, many of these Jesuits were of the synagogue of Satan. These men were some of the biggest black slave owners and traders in the history of the transatlantic slavery. And they owned plantations all up and down the east coast of North and South America and all over the Caribbean. As I told you earlier, mercenaries of the merchants and Catholic Church would sell to Africa and buy these black slaves from black tribal leaders. White Christians had nothing to do with it. Absolutely nothing. However, many will say, even if this were true, they still benefited from it. Oh, really? Did they? Did they really benefit from it? Let me drop some knowledge on you to the dumbasses out there. How did we benefit from it? God Almighty, and contrary to popular belief, white people at one time, not now, there's only a few of us left, but at one time in this nation, 85 to 90% of all white people were godly. They believed in God, some more than others, but they believed in God the Father, they believed in Jesus Christ, they believed in the laws and the rules and the, the commands that God has given, uh, given his children. We were told to be separate from other people. Separate from other people. 
The noted Jewish author, Dr. Abraham Peck, said in his books entitled The Secret, the Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, Volumes 1, 2, and 3, that almost every Jewish household had at least one black slave. Now, Dr. Peck is incredibly smart. And Dr. Peck is Jewish. Now, I ask you a question, and you let your spirit reveal the truth. Do you really believe a white man, his wife, and his two, three, four, five children would be willing or would desire to hire on 10, 15, or 20 black slaves? Do you? How could they control them? They could easily turn on the man, woman, and children and kill them all easily. What kind of white man would be that ignorant, that idiotic to not look after his family? But we are told that this is what happened, and then the white man would get mad and he would beat the slaves. You know, it takes a naive and stupid son of a bitch to believe this type of fantasy. And this is what the synagogue of Satan wants people to do, is to believe in fantasy. To be fair to you, if I were a black man, would I want to hire, if I was a black man with my black wife and my three black children, would I want to hire on 20 white slaves that I could not control, that could kill me and my family at any moment, at any time, could take everything I have? No. But yet this is what we're told. Why are we told this? Because the synagogue of Satan has to deflect the blame away from themselves and put it on everybody else, especially white Christians who are their number one enemy because they are the damn children of the devil, just as Jesus Christ told them over and over and over. To give you another example, Indians, who many people call Native Americans, even though they were not native to this land. Indians were very prominent during this time, and sometimes they worked on farms for families. You never saw a small family hire more than one or two Indians at a time. Why? Because it was not safe. Even if you knew and trusted them, the Indians still at the end of the day were what? Indians. They were not Christians. Folks, this is not hate. This is God's discernment and God's truth. And I know the devil and his children do not like it. That's tough shit. What you like means not a zero to me. Nothing. I only care what my Father and Jesus Christ like. And you damn sure ain't the Father and you ain't Jesus Christ. I know you want to be, but you are not. Not on your best day. Now, what do we think so far? With what, we've, with what we've talked about, does it make any kind of sense to you? Slavery, folks, was done in some instances on a large scale, and it was done with force, and it took many men and many weapons. What we've seen through the television, movies, and internet is lies and fantasy. Now, I ask you to think about what other lies we've been told about our history, Think about the other lies that we've been told about. Surely you see there is a lot of truth that has been hidden from us, and we know who was behind it. I ask you again, and I've already said it once, do you think any man of God would be so damn stupid when it came to the safety of his wife, his beloved, his children, the most important thing in his life, to hire on 15 or 20 black men that he didn't know that he would never trust and say, hey, I want you to work my fields when he didn't have a whole lot of fields anyway to even to begin with. He didn't own a plantation. If he were lucky, he had a small farm and he worked it the best he could to feed his family and maybe at the end of the year, break even or maybe make a few coins. The farmers the men and women and family of those days knew about backbreaking hard work. They worked from sun up until sundown, mom and the children. Everybody had to get involved. This is where the term redneck comes from. My people, especially the men, would be burned around the necks from working in the sun all day. Therefore, 
they would get a red neck. This is where the term red neck comes from. A white man working in, in the fields. Now it has become a word to degrade all white men. My friends, I do not have all the answers. I don't claim to. But I do know this. My father has all the answers. And with his help, with his love, and most of all with his spirit, I, being a lowly man, can punch holes in the devil's lies as long as my father says, I'm going to let you do it. Our father will teach, to, teach us and reveal to us as much truth as he deems us that he wants us to know. Now, it took us using our spirits and some prayer for us to understand this. That's what it took. Now, I ask you, why are not other people doing the same thing? Because they do not love or acknowledge our Father in Jesus Christ. So after learning this little short lesson and exposing the lies that we've been told about slavery, again, I simply ask you to imagine something even more important. What other lies have they told you about your Father, Jesus, and His Holy Word? 